Hello friends, today we will discuss about one of the most important topics in steel structures that is what is vertical bracing and where do we provide vertical bracing. In any interview that you will face, you will be surely asked about questions related to this. So just watch this video for next 5 minutes and I will clear all your doubts related to this. So let's get started. Before moving forward, you should be knowing the concept of stability of structures. So what I will do is I will show you some pictures and you can pause the video and you can identify which structure is stable and which structure is unstable. Now coming to the first one, since you have fixed support at the bottom, so this structure is clearly a stable structure. The second one is unstable since you have pin support at the bottom. The third one is stable structure. Why? Because the supports at the bottom are fixed though you have shear connection between beam and column but since the supports are fixed so this one is a stable structure coming to the next one obviously it is a stable structure since along with the fixed support at the bottom you also have movement connection between beam and column so this one is a stable structure coming to the next one this is clearly unstable because along with the pinned support at the bottom you have shear connection at the top between beam and column so this is a unstable structure this one is stable though you have pin support at the bottom but since you have movement connection between beam and column so this structure is a stable structure what about the next one this is also a stable structure why that we'll see in the next few minutes so in order to provide stability we need either fixity at the bottom that is in the form of support fixity or at the top at the beam column junction in the form of movement connection. I, if you have any one of this condition then your structure will be a stable structure. Now in order to prove this what I did is I modeled a simple portal frame like this and I wanted to check the deflection of this portal frame so here I, here I have shear connection between beam and column and I have pin support at the bottom and when I check the deflection you will be surprised by seeing the value of deflection it was 623.78 into 10 to the power 9 mm which is very huge so clearly from the value you can see that this structure is, is completely unstable now when I change the supports to fixed the deflection got drastically reduced to 16.35 mm and from the deflection value you can see that this structure is a stable structure. Now what I did is along with the fixed support at the bottom I removed those release from the beam and I provided movement connection between beam and column and when I so the deflection again it got reduced to 4.164 mm. Now let's say due to some reason I am unable to provide fixed support at the bottom and also I am unable to provide movement connection between beam and column. So what I did is I simply added one vertical bracing and when I saw the deflection of this frame it was very very less and it was 0.012 mm so you can see that this frame is a stable structure now the question is how this frame with vertical bracing is able to transfer this lateral load so when this lateral load is acting this bracing will be under compression and this lateral load will be directly transferred to this support in the form of shear and if you have one kilonewton acting at this top joint then the shear at this support will be directly one if you check the stad you can see the reactions and you will find one over here and you will find no rea lateral reaction at this support here it will be zero now what about the movement this one kilonewton will generate a movement of one 
multiplied by this height of the column which is 5 so 1 into 5 that is 5 kN meter of moment is generated so this moment will be transferred in the form of push and pull in the support so since here moment is in clockwise direction the reaction will be something like this in anti-clockwise direction that is here it will be downward and here it will be upward and the value of these reactions will be this moment that is phi divided by the length of the beam which is phi so that is 1 kN and here also it will be same that is 1 kN so without touching any software we can also find the reaction that is if this is shear is 1 then directly shear at this support will be 1 and at this support it will be 0 and similarly you have push pull as 1 and 1 but if you have two bracing let's say you have cross bracing like this then the shear of 1 will be distributed half at both these supports so here it will be instead of 1 it will be 0.5 and it will be 0.5 over here but the push pull will remain the same that is 1 and 1 so this is how vertical bracing will transfer this lateral load now the question is where to provide vertical bracing so let's say I am having this frame and you can see that the beams in the x direction is having a shear connection okay and the beams in the z direction is having a moment connection so we don't have any release in this these beams now let's take one by one stability of structure in both the direction so first of all I'm considering this frame that is in the Z direction let's check whether this frame is stable or not as you can see that the column is oriented like this where this is here minor axis of the column and this is here major axis of the column here you can also see the 3d view of this frame now when I consider this frame and check the stability it looks something something like this that is you have pins support at the bottom and you have the moment connection at the top as you can see over here so this frame is stable since you have moment connection at the top so no need to provide vertical bracing in this direction now let's talk about the frame in the x direction that is this frame and also this frame so when you see this frame this frame is completely unstable because you have pin support at the bottom and along with that you have shear connection at the top between beam and column so this is clearly unstable so in order to provide stability what we will do is we will add a vertical bracing to make it stable so now you got your answer where do we provide vertical bracing we will provide vertical bracing at in this direction where you have shear connection between beam and column in that direction we will provide vertical bracing to make this frame stable in this x direction also if you see your column orientation is like this so when load is applied in this direction you will have moment generated about its minor axis and you know that the minor axis moment of inertia of I section is very less so obviously it is better to provide bracing to take care of this minor axis buckling so what we will do is we will provide bracing in the to restrict this minor axis so that is also one of the reason that we have provided bracing in this direction so that it will be helpful so that's all for this vertical bracing where to provide vertical bracing now I will show one more example of stability if you see this frame can you identify whether it is stable or not yes you are correct it is a stable frame but why it is stable let me give you a small example 
let's say this kid is falling what this kid will try to do to prevent it from falling either it will try to find one support which is uh, to hold that support and to and to prevent him from falling or if anyone is standing near by him then what he will try to do is he will hold him or he will hold his hand and he will try to prevent him from falling so in the similar way since this frame is stable and if this unstable frame is connected to this stable frame then this whole frame will become stable so this frame is also stable frame so that's all for this video if you like this content then you can like share and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching bye for now